Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Ardex Academy's uh, training for the exterior concrete repair systems. My name is Jody Proudfit. I'm the category manager here at Ardex. I am today's host uh, for this webinar. If, uh, if everybody's logged in, we've got uh, some people still coming in, but uh, for those that have already made it in, today's presentation will be hosted uh, by Tim uh, Ellison, who is our uh, technical field supervisor and business development manager for this uh, for this product line. And uh, he'll go through his bio in just a second. Just a couple of housekeeping issues. Everybody will be in mute mode, um, but we do have options. You have the chat feature. Uh, you can talk directly to me during the presentation if you have questions uh, or comments that you want to share. We also have the question section on your home screen. You'll, uh, if you click a question in there, We'll be able to answer those questions towards the end of today's presentation. Today's presentation is scheduled for about 45 minutes with questions and answers following that. So um, with that, I'm gonna turn today's meeting over to Tim. So Tim, take it away. Okay, hello and thank you for attending today's Artix training. Uh, my name is Tim Ellison, Technical Supervisor, Business Development Manager for Finished Services. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I started with Artex uh, back in the technical department, back in Aliquippa there uh, in 2004. I come from an installation background. Something that Artex realized back then, especially in our technical department, is it's much easier to teach somebody product and try to put a trial on their hand and um, have them look re respectable on the job site. So after um, 2004, most of the, the gentlemen we've hired in, uh, women, um, that if we've hired in technical come from that type of background. Um, had an opportunity to move west. I now live in Phoenix. Um, today is our last day in the 80s. Starting tomorrow, we'll be in the 90s. Um, but what that allows us to do is be able to make faster, easier decisions out in the field, right? So that's what I do. That's what I do. Um, I was the first at Artex let outside their corporate office to be able to make some of those decisions. I'm the one giving you the thumbs up, thumbs down, if you can go with an installation or not. We realize that you're an, you're, an, you're an installer, you have a relationship with your sales professional, or an sales professional, you're not calling them because you didn't read the bag. You're calling them because you're in a situation, an issue that you need to get help out of. And that's what we're here to do, hope you do that. Um, you're gonna hear me mention this um, a few different times today, that you're going to use you your customer somebody you know is going to use some of these products for the very first time please get us involved we want to be involved from the beginning making sure everybody's happy moving forward instead of calling us up up after the fact saying something went wrong right because you call me up and tell me that something went wrong on a very fast is what sales professional was involved and you're going to come back and no oh, i didn't want to bother them did you call back to aliquippa you know, just to make sure you had the right product and just understand a little bit more. No, I don't want to bother them either. Okay, how about the Ardex app? The Ardex app is great just for estimating jobs, right? Great for just estimating jobs. You have the Ardex app, you put in what product you're going to use, you put in how many square feet, it tells you how many bags or how many units you need for that installation. No, I didn't have time to download the app either. So then I'm simply going to ask you, did you read the bag? Most of the information we have on installing our products are on the bags themselves. A few things coming through our training that you will absolutely learn coming through one of our trainings once we get back to that mode, right? That you will learn, number one, how to read the bag, and number two, learn how to measure water. Because I get it. Those are two things that installers don't like to do, right? They just kind of figure it out. Well, we have some really, really smart people over in Germany that came up with these formulations and let them and believe what we put on the bag itself. Alrighty. All right, so give you a, a few services that we provide for you, Artex Americas, get into the structural engineers, or uh, structural products, and into resurfacing. Our mission statement at, at Artex is that we make high performance products. Right? Why do people buy our products? Why do people use Ardex? Because they work. And that's the bottom line. They work. To the academy, 
I mentioned the trainings. Um, you know, the new world we live in now, uh, once we get back to able to get back together, we are big on hands-on, on the training. Again, we want everyone comfortable moving forward instead of calling us up after the fact saying something went wrong. Something went wrong. All right, for all of our trainings, all right, Aliquippa, Mansfield, Stockton, you know, I miss standing in front of those classrooms. So to make today a little bit normal um, for this presentation, I kissed my wife goodbye, went into the garage, got in the car, backed up, drove around the block, parked in the street, and walked it through the front door just to help it be this, or help me kind of feel like I'm in a different area. Right? Now, all these trainings are free for, for you. Right? You go online, you look at the trainings we have available, um, register uh, once we get back to able to do that again, and um, full on hands on. So you will get into the material. You will learn how to read the bag. You will learn how to measure water. And if I could get folks to just do those few things, everything will go much easier and much simpler. But even on that, these facilities are available to you and for you. If there's a training seminar that's set up or not set up that you want to have, we kind of put it, you have a crew of, we like to have a minimum of eight people, um, but as many as 30, 35. Right? You have your own crew, your own team, your own customers, whatever it may be, um, contact your local Ordex sales professional. Uh, we'll set up the training, coordinate it, and have it dialed into however you want it or need it. So maybe your customers want a pump training and a moisture training. We will do that for you. All right. So just get involved with them and um, let's have that discussion. Job site responses. All right. Job starts. I mentioned before we are huge on this. There's been job sites that I've sat on for a week. Nothing more than to just answer questions. You know, the general contractor, he didn't want to have to wait for a letter, or want to have to send an email or text. They just asked for somebody to be there. And just in case something come up, they can just go over and say, okay, we have this situation. What do we need to do? You know, and that's what we do for you. Anything at all. You know, it doesn't matter how large or small a job may be. You know, some of those were hospitals, but one job start that I did was up in Alaska. The installer just wasn't quite understanding our epoxy drought. So I flew to Alaska, a 20, 30 minute presentation on how to mix up and clean up our epoxy drought, and he was on his way. So again, it doesn't matter how small or large the job may be. We want everyone to be happy moving forward, comfortable moving forward with the products, right? instead of coming up with after the fact. And as I mentioned earlier, you're calling your sales professionals because you're on a job site that you're in a situation you need to be, get out of. So they tell you to do something. I tell you to do something that's not quite in our technical data sheet. Ask us for it in writing. But don't do that just of us. Do that of our competition, too. Because you'd be surprised. It's our competition. stuff that just doesn't quite make sense. Ask them for it in writing. You might be surprised as they come back and go, yeah, we really don't do that. A little weary of doing what they're telling me to do. Because nowadays, it's all about protecting yourself, making sure you have backup, make sure you have support. And we have a full-on technical team back there doing nothing but writing letters. Right? It could be addressed to you, your customer, whoever you need or want it to be addressed to. You know, that's your backup. That's your support. You know, you're dealing with somebody that um, might not quite understand what you're trying to achieve. You know, they looked it up on the World Wide Web and they decided that, all right, I want to do this. Well, that's just not possible. Well, you ask us to help visit and have that discussion with the end user, and then we'll give them a letter. You can take a, a for me to get any type of warranty whatsoever, I have to follow these instructions. Right? Take it, take it out of your hands and give it to us. A few milestones we have here. 1999, the concrete dressing. Dresses up old sidewalks, driveways patios. It doesn't have to be old. It can be a rained out flat. These will be one of the products we get into a little more depth here in a few minutes. 2010, our structural engineer products. Okay. Um, in years past, we didn't have products to go to any depth. Now we have full-on structural repair mortars. They can go from whatever the minimum thickness may be, a quarter inch, half inch, 
up to eight inches if necessary and needed. And some of them can be based in as little something over top of it in as little as six hours. Some are two to three days. It's still much faster than regular concrete itself. Our product lineup here, we'll be going over these products here today. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever about any other Artix products, please call us, ask. So, to structural concrete repair, right, you see it here, um, for some reason, um, the gutter didn't go all the way down to the ground, all the way down to the surface, and the water just washed away the tilt up wall, right, exposing rebar. Closing rebar. Here, you know, just more corrosion. We also kind of tease our technical guy in Texas who ended up actually getting um, the Artex minivan stuck in a parking structure. Um, this wasn't his doing at all, but um, just other corrosion that can be, we can fix. We can fix. All right, this job here in Washington, D.C., you're looking at that and going, oh my gosh, you're kidding me. You, have a, you guys have a product? Do you have products that can fix that and address that? Yes, we do. We just need to be steered in the right direction of what um, needs to be done. And yes, we have products that can fix that and address that. But the number one question we need to ask is this. What did the structural engineer say? What did the structural engineer say? All right, because it's up to them to determine what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. And then what product we need to use. All right, job here in Arizona, another tilt-up wall, tilt-up building. Um, the inside floor, inside concrete, was about three feet higher than the exterior of the building. And where that concrete met the tilt-up wall, there was a crack all along it. Con met the contractor out there. He asked me how they need to fix it. I said, well, what are we trying to achieve here? Are we trying to just make that crack go away? Or are we trying to actually put this back together? The contractor actually said, well, that's a great question. Structural engineer will be here shortly. We'll let him tell us what we, what we need to do. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So we need to see to know, is it load bearing or is it just cosmetic? And we have both products, yes. But we just, again, need these in the right direction. All right. So the structure re repair, patch. And then once we have that done, the concrete's fixed. Now we have areas that look like it's patched. Well, now we can, now we'll resurface it and make it all look the same. And then seal it and we're done. So just a few products here. Uh, the first one we have is the Artifix. This is a low viscosity, rigid polyurethane. Low viscosity. It's as fluid as water. Rigid. It's harder than the concrete itself. It doesn't matter how large or small the cracks may be. All right. The interior, exterior. All right, but I do have to caution you that if you're gonna use this outside, please cover it with something. If you do not cover it with something, it will turn yellow. It'll still be hard, still perform, but it'll just look yellow. So way back in the day when we were still able to fly, um, sitting in the window seat and you're on the tarmac, you know, on the runway and you look over out the window and you see those areas of concrete that have been fixed and um, those yellow spots, something that's similar to the artifacts. All right, so sooner than later, but we we're gonna get on it. If you're gonna stick anything to it, you're gonna bond anything to the artifix, you have to have a stand broadcast. Keep in mind, this is a polyurethane. Things don't like to stick to polyurethane. So sand broadcast, right? Even if you're gonna put paint on it, sand broadcast. You're gonna put concrete dressing over top of it, sand broadcast. It has to have a sand broadcast. Now, the sand broadcast will it will hump up some of the artifacts, okay? It's gonna displace some of it. So sooner than later, strike it off. I simply use a plastic putty knife, right? So I inject it into the crack, sand broadcast, strike it off with a plastic putty knife. What else, this, what else this allows me to do is I have some of the artifacts mixed with the sand. I have a paste. Then I can work into voids that I might have missed for whatever reason. And fast putting it back into use in 15 minutes. Back into use in 15 minutes, that fast. Again, the job here in uh, Arizona, uh, electric company. 
that they had spalls in their concrete, and whenever their forklifts would drive over top of it, it would shake their computer, and they would miss and lose what they were picking on that job for that job. Right? So we visited the, the, the electric company. We have some cement that would be less expensive for them to use, but they needed speed. They needed speed. So we cleaned the spall, inject the artifacts into the spall, brought it up to even with the concrete, and then 15 minutes later, they were driving over top of it with their forklifts. And that's what they needed or wanted. Because they were not trying to stick anything to it, bond anything to it, they did not need to have a SAM broadcast. They did not. Right? So crack chasing. Crack chasing is not necessary. Cleaning the crack, yes. But chasing the crack, opening it up, is not necessary. As I mentioned, this is as fluid as water. In years past, we had to chase cracks to open up the surface so we can force the material that was much thicker into that crack or joint. This being as fluid as water, we don't have to do that. We still have to have clean. We still have to have clean. So here, we're injecting it into the, the crack, into the joint. See on the picture on the left that we're sand broadcasting, it comes out black and then turns to gray once it's cured. I can assure you that, I can assure you that if you let it go longer than 15 minutes, you will not be able to scrape it off. Right? So you still want to get into it while it's still black, not turning gray. Now, some installers will do it different ways. Sure. Right? So they already have the machine, they already have the grinder, shop blasters on the job site. Where they were just, they prepped the concrete, exposes cracks, they fixed it with artifix, sand broadcast, because they're going to stick something to it. But they already have the machines on site, so they just run the machines back over top of it. Right? That's how they choose to do it. Again, personal preference, I just use a plastic putty knife. So it is that easy. Here, this crack is fixed. It's mended back together. This mends the concrete back together. Here, no sand broadcast because. We're not trying to bond anything to it. All right, exterior, right, where we just took the brick from around the swimming pool and brought it out onto the deck. Just made it look like, I mean, made it go away, basically. Made it go away. So a few structural repair mortars we have. We have a trial grade and informant floor. Both of these categories from Ardex install the exact same way first first thing you need to have is clean sound solid concrete straighten up the edge the rounded curves when we remember our geometry that we're having straight lines and we're going to need to maintain the minimum thickness for the product that's being used so the first question is what did the structural engineer say the second question is what's my minimum thickness that i need to go All right that's going to help us determine which product and which which route we need to go in but once we decide what products we have we have our, all the edges squared up and we have the minimal thickness achieved the installation goes ssd saturated surface dry the concrete right so water on the surface that it's damp with no puddling of water ssd then we're going to take the product that has been chosen and we're going to put a scrub coat over the ssd not a slurry we're not going to over water the product we're going to have the product mixed as they are intended to be mixed take the product scrub it into the surface while the material is still wet you place the product into it screed it and then these products must be cured so curing compound or simply just plastic over top of it for however long the product individual product takes it says it needs to take to cure all right so all of these are going to solve the same <coughs> excuse me same way first one we're going to talk about here is the erm Exterior ramping mortar. This has an anti-corrosive inhibitor in it, right? So if you have exposed rebar, no concern of painting or doing something to the rebar. This has it in it. Goes down to a quarter of an inch, up to two inches neat, up to eight inches with aggregate. It helps you achieve ADA requirements uh, for ramps. Um, it's a very versatile product. Very versatile product. Two jobs that we have here. Um, the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. Uh, the lights just cracked around the light fixtures, and then there was a tripping hazard around the grate. Right, so we jackhammer out the concrete. Right down to, or uh, and again, remembering our our geometry, making sure we're having straight edges. Right, 
and then fill in it. For the one, the grate on the right, we saw cut and bush hammered out so it can be brought down so it looks like zero. The reality is that that's that quarter of an inch minimum that we need to achieve. If you do not keep the minimum requirements, it will crack. These products will crack and disband. It will. Uh, these are structural repair mortars. They are meant to have a mass of material there, whether it be a mass of a quarter of an inch or a half inch, but it's still a mass of material that is there. cannot be brought down to zero. Job over in Hawaii. Right? We instructed them to stop cutting bush hammer out. They chose not to. So the end foot 18 inches, two feet, um, that was not the minimum required, cracked and responded. I mean, it's, we're telling you what it's going to do. Please follow our instructions. Make sure it's going to work the way you need it to. All right, so some ramps um, to meet ADA requirements. It just wasn't sloped the right way. Right, so we just needed to get it and have it sloped the correct way. Now, the other area for these are parking structures, especially in California, where if ADA requirements is that the concrete is level, not just flat and smooth, level. So you think of some of those older parking structures where the handicapped parking spots are there, sure, but they're not level, not level. All right, Arctic product, uh, project in Anaheim, right, brand new concrete slab that just wasn't sloped the right way. Just wasn't sloped the right way. You did two, a few different football stadiums we're in now too. The, the, the new football stadium at uh, San Francisco, where the um, seats were, it just it was sloped to the back, so the, the rain couldn't drain off of it. So ERM was used um, just to make sure the slope was the correct slope. Um, it's being installed, I believe, right now at the uh, new Raider Stadium in Las Vegas, right. just to make sure. And this installs a lot like concrete. Right. Concrete guys are kind of used to this. Right. It's creating it into place. So again, here, remembering our geometry and having the nice straight edges, no rounded edges, um, bush saw cut. If you look close enough at the pictures, you can see the saw cuts that were there. Um, hammered out um, to achieve my minimum thickness. Uh, upper right, we're SSDing just with a brush and some water, small area. Our scrub coat, right, the bottom left, and then placing the product in the bottom right. right. And for the ERM, it cures for two to three days. Right? And then it's as hard as it's going to be. And you can do whatever you need or want to it at that point. Right? Some other ramping just needed to be fixed, needed to be addressed. So it wasn't, didn't meet ADA requirements. Um, so here we go. To our foreman pores, all right, these are much looser materials. All right, the first one we have here is the TRM, transportation repair mortar, trench repair mortar, whatever you need that T and TRM to stand for to make it fit for you. Um, that's what it's there for. All right, this is fast. First, you see here that it's a half inch minimum. Up to four inches, need up to eight inches with aggregate. That's fast. Put traffic in two hours. Vehicle traffic in four to six. Other materials over top of it, four to six. So you have that building that they cut the concrete, put new plumbing, new wiring, whatever it may be. Right? And then they're going to pour concrete in it, and you're going to tell them they need to wait 30, 60, 90 days before they um, put floor covering over top of it or something over top of it. So they're looking because of this trench, I have to wait that long? Yes. Well, we could have used TRM, and then six hours later, we could have been moving forward with the project. Oh, well, that's fast, but we don't need it that fast. Well, then ERM. ERM. All right, it's two to three days. The TRM is four to six hours. Fast. Here in Dallas, Texas, you know, TRM used a lot of times on runways and highways um, because it is so fast. Because it is so fast. Here we had a barbecue, uh, car caught on fire in Texas, and um, just needed to get it addressed, needed to get it fixed. <coughs> Excuse me. So, cut the concrete, shot lasting, jackhammering a little bit of it out, just to make sure we got sound and solid. All right, 
right, see where they dot cut, kept all the nice straight edges um, that are there. Right. SSDing, then scrub coat, place the TRM. And four to six hours later, they were gone and the highway was repaired. All right. So again, TRM fast creates heat. So the thicker it is, the more heat it generates. So we need to have it cooled down before we start putting anything over top of it. But if we don't, it'll just cook whatever we try to put over top of it. So we need to make sure it cools back off to put something over top of it. All right, MC Rapid in four to six hours. All right, other primers. As soon as it loses its heat, and is able to be worked on. So trench repair mortar. You know, think of those jobs. Think of those areas that you could have addressed them and had them move on. And the one other patch that we have, it's not structural, this concrete patch. Right, this was our, one of our original products that we had. Um, it's meant to go down thin, up to half inch minimum, or sorry, up to half inch, quarter inch minimum. All right, up to two inches, we're at aggregate to it. But it's meant for smaller areas. All right, just meant for smaller areas. Suitable for foot traffic and, and uh, rubber wheel traffic, no issues, no problem. All right, so once we get the areas fixed and repaired, then we need to resurface them. Because again, all right, so you have this brand new concrete slab or an old concrete slab that was fixed and repaired. And now there's spots everywhere where everything was addressed. Now we resurface it, go over the top of the entire area with concrete dressing. All right, it does that, dresses up concrete. Dresses up concrete. You see here we have a 40 pound bag and a 20 pound bag, CD and CD5. They both get about 100 square feet per bag. How can that 20 pound bag get the same as a 40 pound bag? Well, it's the size of the aggregate. CD has a much heavier aggregate in it than the CD fine. It was the original one that we had. Right? We manufacture this in outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, it tends to have some weather and some snow and some ice where we just need that heavy aggregate to create that non slip surface. CD fine, more for us out, out here in the West and the South where we just tend to walk around in our bare feet a little more often. All right, so we didn't need to have it as heavy of an aggregate um, in the product. But it creates that, a non-slip surface. You think of some of these jobs that are, that are out there. Um, once we're able to go back to restaurants and they clean them at night, pressure wash the patios, pressure wash the decks. Um, the next morning, they open up, people walking over top of them with hard-soled shoes, it can still be a little bit slick. Right, so to fix that, concrete dressing, fine or regular, over top of it to create that non-slip surface. Olympic bicycle track in Seattle. <laughs> they poured, they finished off, off the track, finished off the concrete, it was smooth. They asked us if we had something to create a non-slip surface. It tends to rain a little bit in Seattle, and so it was slick for the bikes racing over top of that surface. So we said, sure, use the concrete dressing. They used this concrete dressing, created that non-slip surface. They said, fantastic, great. A few months later, they call us back and go, um, you have something that's not so aggressive? So the uh, road rash wasn't very pleasant whenever they would crash. So we said, yeah, we have the CD fine. So they actually went over top of it um, with the CD fine just to take some of that roughness um, off that surface. But just think of all those areas that this can be used. Colleges, universities, hospitals. And you ask them where they might have a tripping hazard or someplace that the concrete has been replaced. Right? They could grind it down that lip. They could grind it down, but now it's exposing some of the aggregate. It looks different than everything else. Or you can go over the entire area and make it look the same. So me being grounded here for a while, um, do some walking out in my community, and there's areas of their sidewalk that says that they have painted on there, R and R, remove and replace, because it's a tripping hazard. Oh, we're going to visit our the association here and say, okay, we understand you're going to be re removing that concrete, but you know that's going to look different than everything else because 
transported at a different time. Well, there's this product here, the concrete jetting, that makes it all look uniform. Oh, okay. But just think of that. Um, two of the bigger jobs we have with the concrete dressing, the rental car facility at Sky Harbor Airport, it just got rained on. It wasn't the finish they looked they wanted. Um, they're actually extending the Sky Train to go to the rental car facility to the airport. And then so a couple of days that it rained here, um, they got washed out and they needed to fix the surface of the concrete. Right? Another large job that we did um, was the Apple parking garages. I just think of those two areas, the rental car facility and the Apple parking garage, how many cars drive over top of that every day? Uh, maybe not so much now, but before, right? all the cars that drove over top of those. Right? The installer that did the job up in Apple actually built in a maintenance program that if a vehicle leaks fluids for whatever reason, he will come for a fee, remove that area, and then replace and put down new concrete dressing. So it's always look fresh and new. See, it goes down thin, typically about a sixteenth of an inch. Walk on it in two hours, seal it in two hours. So the installation for this goes. Day one, you prep the concrete, you clean the concrete. And it can be as easy as just pressure washing. Pressure wash the concrete. Day two, come back prep anything else that might, that might need to be addressed. And then we ask you to take our concrete guard, our sealer that's there, our concrete guard and cut it one to one with water. All right, not as a bonding agent, but what we found out is the concrete dressing sticks to concrete just fine. But concrete being concrete, all right, it robs moisture out of the concrete dressing at different levels at different rates. So we can get some shading of the concrete dressing. By us applying the concrete guard, cut one to one with water, it allows the concrete dressing to dry more uniformly. All right. So, day two, concrete guard diluted one to one with, with water over the concrete, the concrete dressing over top of that. Two hours later, you seal it. Later that evening, they can drive over top of it. So, a driveway can be repaired, fixed, make, made to look brand new again. In two days. In two days. So here, just prep the concrete. Place the concrete, or sorry, the concrete dressing. Me becoming a little bit older, wiser. I like to do more things standing up than getting on my hands and knees and troweling it. The concrete dressing can be placed with a squeegee or a magic trowel. Right? Something like that, you're able to get off your hands and knees and place it, especially in large areas, especially in large areas. And then you broom finish it. You do not have to broom finish it. There's a contractor in Salt Lake City. He will not let me see how he's finishing the concrete dressing. His concern is he shows me how he's finishing it. I'm going to teach everybody else how to do it. And I probably would. But a broom finish just helps hide. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of things, a lot of trial marks, all right? And personal preference here again, I prefer just taking the handle of that broom and just shaking it a little bit back and forth just to give it a bit of a wavy look. Because you're pulling a broom in straight lines and you go off a little bit. You think you're going straight with whatever surface you're going over top of, call it your, your driveway. And the driveway might not be quite square with the house or the building. Now you're pulling these straight lines and you go up a little bit. Now the concern is why are these lines crooked? Or if you just shake the broom a little bit, it just throws the eyes off. A friend of mine here, he had underneath his patio, concrete was finished one way. He had cool decking around his swimming pool. And then where his grill was, was it was finished a different way. He wanted it all to look the same. He went and bought the material. I showed him how to do it. We filled in the cool decking. Then I showed him how to squeegee it down, and then a light broom finish with, again, shaking the handle. And he looked at me after I showed him how to do that. and said, so if my wife doesn't like it, it's my fault? I go, no, that's exactly it. It's your fault. It's not mine. You have to live with it, not me. But just some different tips and tricks we can do. You know, we very rarely get those phone calls that goes, 
thank you for the training. This one's fantastic, but I did get that from a gentleman in Denver a few years ago. He was having just some concerns, issues with placing the concrete dressing. I showed him a few tips and tri tricks. <coughs> Excuse me. He got four different apartment complexes. All right, that was the one phone call I ever got a real thank you from. All right, tape, remove the, any tape um, as you move them through. You have a finished look. Feel it in two hours and you're done. All right, just a bit dated. This job here, just a little bit dated. Wanted to freshen it up, make it look brand new again. There you go. There you go. SFO, kind of like what the airports look nowadays. Nobody there. Um, but they tinted it black. The CD fine comes in gray and white, so it can be tinted to whatever color you need or wanted to. Now they were forward thinking here, going, hey, you have a nice gray product, but with all the uh, luggage and everything that's being dragged over top of it, it's going to turn black. It's going to get dirty. Well, let's start off with it being black. Now it looks dirty. It's doesn't matter, it's still all black. So for coloring these products, um, there's many different ways, but once something that I found that, that I think is the easiest is you have your container of water. You have a line that you fill that garbage can up with water to that line, and you add however much pigment that you sold the job for, whatever color you have, into that source of water. You agitate it, <coughs> excuse me. You agitate it a little bit just to keep the pigment from falling out of the suspension. Right? And you draw out measures of water out of that water source. We're going to have much longer runs of consistent color than trying to add color to each batch to mix up. Right? It can be stenciled. It can be stenciled. Right? This was simply done with blue tape. But they have other stencils out there. Right? Here's that swimming pool that we did. Here again, they just used blue tape around the swimming pool. A couple, a couple areas they made brought the brick out. It's not really brick, it just looks like brick. But the base coat is gonna be whatever color you want the grout to be, whatever you want the joint to be. Here they just chose the light gray, right? And then pigmented the stone on top to be that beige color, right? But that's the look they want, right? But anything you can color concrete with, you can color the concrete dressing with. You can stop topically stain it or dye it if you need or want. Very, very user-friendly product. And then you seal it. And the sealer we have is the concrete guard. So 40% solids, acrylic, very user-friendly product. Um, it can be rolled on, sprayed on, however you feel you need and want it to, to be installed or, or rolled on or sprayed on. For those in California, because the air is a little bit different over there, um, we're coming out with concrete guard 2.0. It has a little, it has a lower VOC content. So we're able to use it and sell it in California. The new norm, right? We may not even be able to do this anymore. Maybe the Chinese had it a little bit right that we just start bowing to each other. I don't know. But uh, any questions at this time? So Tim, uh, the folks have been fairly active with questions today. So I'm gonna fire off some new ones for you. Um, one question that we had was regarding primers with TRM, and if you could elaborate on the use of P51 or any other primers uh, for that product, it'd be great. Okay, so it depends on if we're using an interior or exterior, right? So interior, P51 is an interior primer, right? Um, you certainly can. Exterior, you can't use P51, you're an SSD. In you know areas where you have a warmer climate, you know, in Arizona here in a, another month or so, um, maintaining SSD might be a bit difficult. Might be a, di be a bit difficult. So we can use an exterior primer as EP2000 with sand, or we can use BACA, a bonding and anti-corrosive inhibitor, you know, as a bonding agent for either one. Great. Uh, the next question I have for you uh, is around uh, broadcasting sand with Artifix. So okay. is, is the sand broadcast needed in the crack with Artifix if you will apply MC Rapid over it? Yes, 
Absolutely. Again, if you're going to stick anything to it, you have to have a stand broadcast. Great. You have to have a stand broadcast. And then uh, here's another question on a product we didn't cover, but uh, is MRF acceptable to fill saw cuts, cracks before applying MC Rapid? Yes, that's exactly what it's meant to be for. Moisture resistant um, feather finish. Absolutely. Absolutely it is. Great, great. Uh, so the next question I have for you is, uh, uh, do all the structural products have anti-corrosive uh, inhibitors in them? Um, they don't. So even the two that I had, one did, one didn't. Um, so that's actually the third question that must be answered. All right. So the number, the very first question is, what did the structural engineer say? The second question is, what's my minimum thickness that I need to go? The third question is, is there any exposed rebar? Right. So some of them have um, anti-corrosive inhibitors in them. And some do not. And if you have exposed rebar and you want to use a product that does not have an anti-corrosive inhibitor, we need to address that rebar with um, the Artex BACA. Okay. Um, some questions continue to fire in. So um, there's one here. Uh, a gentleman had a little spotty uh, reception during your CD conversation around pigments. Can you just go through pigments again and also address the temperature of the water? That needs that okay. needs to be maintained at. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I haven't talked this much for a while, so my throat's getting a little uh, scratchy. So, um, so in the summertime, we have to be concerned about the temperature. Uh, again, I live here in Arizona. This is not a June, July, August product concrete dressing to be placed um, in Arizona um, for all of the products. In the summertime, we need to be aware of how the product's stored. We don't want to be under, we don't want it to be in direct sunlight. We don't want it to get, be cooked. And we also need to be mindful of the water, the temperature of water. There's going to be times that's coming up here real shortly that we're just going to take blocks of ice and set it into my water source. Just that way I can help maintain. There's installers out there that they, they've taken a cooler. Put a female and male end on each end of the cooler, copper uh, tubing inside, and just fill that with ice water and have the hose go through that to just keep the water cold. But yes, we have to be very mindful of the temperature of the water, especially in the summertime. So, again, personal preference. There's many different ways to pigment and add color to these products. You can topically stain or dye depending on the look you're trying to do, achieve. If you want to integrally color them, you, know, you certainly can try and attempt to measure out pigment for each batch. I just found that it's much easier if I pigment my water, right? So I have a container filled with water um, to a certain point. That way I know how much water to put back in it if I'm doing more than just that. And I add pigment to that water itself. And I agitate that water every so often just to keep the pigment from falling out of suspension. And then for the concrete dressing, it takes five quarts of water. I have my five quart measuring container. I dip it into that water source, and I'm going to have much more consistent color at longer runs um, doing it that way than um, trying to, again, try that. Once I, once I get any water out of that, empty, clean it out, add water, and then set that same mark again, and add the same amount of pigment. Now, I might be 20 bags into it, you know? And I might get a little shade, shade variation 20 bags from now, but it's not going to be every single batch. Okay, so questions keep rolling in. There's a couple different products that we're going to, uh, that we're being asked about, um, and I'll try to answer some of these as well. So a question was, does Artex sell colorants for CD? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, we do not have a color package for CD. Uh, colors are widely available. Uh, I would look at your uh, local store where you're buying your, your mix for uh, the color additives that you uh, can work with. Uh, another question is around the use of SDP for sloping. Uh, does it need to be keyed in? Is it good for underneath a urethane system? I'm, I'm actually really glad that question was asked. Um, so, technically, the SDP, the instructions, mix it up, dump it out, screed it off. I do have a problem with that because as 
although we vacuum and clean that surface as much as we can, there still can be a small amount of dust on that surface. So keying it in is absolutely necessary. It just helps take care of any of that dust. And again, it's very fine layer. We're not putting it over dirt. I want to be perfectly clear with that. We want it clean. We hopefully don't have any dust, but because job sites are job sites, we understand it. But keying it in is very important. And then making sure it's wet to wet. Okay. Uh, another question about MRF, and that is how deep can MRF go? A half inch. You know, we want, it's, it's meant as a patch, right? So we're going to keep it that. We're not going to go over an entire area. Um, it's meant for just that of a patch itself. Okay. You can go a little bit deeper in a well defined area. But well defined. If you're patching, patching a bigger area, a half inch is usually the max. Um, yeah. Another question what, uh, which fast cure self leveler is recommended to go on a floor before epoxy is installation? Um, so, a high build epoxy? So, so it depends on how much time you have. Okay. Um, 20 mils tends to be the number. Um, less than 20 mils um, for SDP, it's it's uh, a couple of days. You know, greater than 20 mils, it's three to five days. All right. That's for SDP. And all the other products are a lot slower than that. So we need to ask, you know, how much time do we actually have and what are we trying to get to? Um, because you get into some of the other products, it can be uh, seven to 10 days of curing. So again, it depends a lot on how fast and how thick you need to go. Um, but we can actually, we absolutely can put a high milk um, yield epoxy over top of them. And uh, for the for the gentleman that answered this or asked this question, uh, we did just launch a brand new product, uh, K40, uh, in the last couple of weeks that is a rapid SLU. Uh, if you're looking for speed, you might want to check out the new K40 product. It may be what you're looking for if you need it to be extremely fast. Um, so another another great question. Um, anything we can use to fix old oil spots in a garage prior to the installation of CD or CP? So typically when somebody asks me that, I say nice try. Um, the oil and grease they're meant to have their lubricants not to have anything stuck to them so they need to be completely removed um, i know a lot of folks don't like to hear that but that's the reality of it so you might have to depending on how old there you might have to do a core sample to see how far it's penetrated um, but the oil and grease have they have to be completely removed then depending on how much you remove depends on what how we fix that area Okay. Um, getting down to the last couple of questions here, Tim. Um, yeah. how, uh, so the question here is, how durable is concrete dressing and is it freeze-thaw stable? Okay, so I, I mentioned the, the two different parking structures at Sky Harbor, the rental car facility at Sky Harbor Airport, um, Apple um, parking garage, and, and again, all those vehicles driving over top of it. Um, it's at O'Hare Airport, I believe, um, just being done. It's back in Aliquippa with tractor trailer trucks driving over top of it at our factory. Um, it's extremely durable. It goes down very thin. It's extremely durable. Free spa, again, Pittsburgh, uh, Minneapolis, up in Canada. Um, and it acts and is treated just like concrete. Great. So um, one last question about MRF, um, and that is, what is the max indoor-outdoor um, depth? Hey, can you define that a little bit more? So we, we tell you an inch in small, well-defined areas. So you think of uh, uh, a can, right? Um, so something that's not very big. Right, that's small to weather fund area, so we can go up to an inch there, but typically it's only going to be a half of an inch maximum. Right, but again, if you're in this situation, let us come and visit, let us help make the right recommendation. Great, 
Um, so another another couple of questions they're they're coming in. This is awesome. Um, let's see. Is there does Arctic have products for over moisture mitigation containing slabs? Hopefully I got your question right there, David. I I'm sorry, I don't quite understand. So there's a moisture issue with the concrete. Yeah, so I think the I think what he's looking for here is uh, we have MC Rapid, uh, which yeah. would be which would be the product of choice if the slab is has a high moisture reading, and then okay. from there um, you can go over that. Now it, the the additional question he just chimed in is. Uh, yeah. Which uh, slabs that have an admix in them? Do we have any admix? So we don't have any admix, and so and for some of these products, the jury's still out on them, right? They say that they eliminate moisture coming from the concrete slab. Again, the jury's still out on them to confirm that they do or don't work. Um, for the MC Rapid, which can be installed up to a hundred percent relative humidity. Um, we just have to have the surface dry for four hours. So I don't care if it's 100% RH. I just need the surface to be dry for four hours. We have to have a concrete surface profile of three. Um, depending on how dense the concrete concrete may be, we might need to be just a little more aggressive um, and get to a concrete surface profile of four or five just to give more surface for the MC Rapid to bond to. And then once before we even do use the MC Rapid, we need to determine how thick the cement, and we have many cements that can go over top of them, um, all of them, um, just depends on the, the maximum thickness and what we need to do to the MC Rapid to do that. But the MC Rapid is up to 100% relative humidity. Um, and again, we just have to have a concrete surface profile for it to bond. Okay. And for the gentleman that asked that question, uh, we'll be providing uh, Tim's contact information at the end of the at the end of the session. If you want to reach out to him directly, you can have a direct conversation about that. Um, the next question is around uh, concrete dressing and its compatibility with chlorine. And are there any adverse effects if it's installed around pools? Um, no, no, it's not. No concern around swimming pools. You're going to put a seal over top of it. Um, no, no concern of, with with swimming pools and. I didn't quite hear the first question. Uh, it's just around the compatibility with chlorine. In oh, chlorine. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you're going to be you're going to protect it. You know. So as long as the sealer over top of it is not bothered by chlorine, the concrete dressing isn't going to be bothered by uh, chlorine. I'm going to. You will and want to seal the concrete dressing. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, I just uh, give it one second here, Tim, see if we got any other uh, questions from the field. A uh, couple of questions have come in privately that I've just been able to address. Uh, okay. All right. So, again, you're going to use these products for the first time. If you're not sure what product you want to use for the first time, call us. We have over 120 sales professionals out in the field um, that are more than happy to visit the job site for you. And just, you know, again, make sure you're comfortable moving forward. You might be thinking in one direction, and we come out there and go, well, you know what? Um, this route here might be a little bit easier for you. you know, so it's much better if we get eyes on it. Because, um, again, I, people send me pictures. What do I need to do? I go, well, it looks like this to me. But, you know, can I have somebody else, somebody actually put other eyes on it um, just to make sure we're going in the right direction? But those, those folks are out there um, to assist you and, again, make sure everyone's comfortable moving forward. Um, other marketing support here, you know, this is kind of the route we're going um, you know, with these webinars and things like that. But Artex 101 on YouTube, we're getting more and more actual installation videos, right? So it's not just product information. Today was a lot of product information of what, just what we have. But we're getting into more and more of the training videos themselves from start to finish so look for those and so a product line right and it's even much larger than this itself right um again get us let us be involved we want to be involved we want everyone being happy and comfortable using the products going through um, and have a successful installation right 
So Tim, I have one more question that I think is a must answer for today. And then uh, we are gonna, uh, this will be our last question. Uh, but the question is around wet curing of ERM. Is it a must? You have to cure them, yes. Yes, you absolutely have to cure them. All the structural repair mortars, uh, and we just mentioned two. We just mentioned two, ERM and TRM, they must be cured. But is there a wet cure or just allowed to? No, so we're going to put something over top of it to not allow the fast evaporation of the water. So it's a curing compound or plastic itself. Great. <coughs> great, great. Well, everybody, I thank you uh, for your attendance today and all the great questions that came through. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, you'll be receiving an email with contact information for uh, Tim uh, Ellison as well as uh, his counterpart, uh, Craig Morris, who are both out in the field as our business development team, uh, as well as links into our uh, our next uh, training center. Our technicians are always willing to help uh, and get you any information that you need to make sure that your project is successful. Um, again, uh, thank you all for your participation today. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, please, please feel free to reach out to your Arctic sales professional, and they'll be able to help you in market. If you need assistance finding one of those folks, uh, feel free to contact Tim, uh, Craig, or myself, and we'll be happy to connect you.